reading from Isaiah. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory. And you shall be called by a new name 
that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken and your land shall no more be termed desolate. But you shall be called, my delight is in her and your land married. For the Lord delights in you and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your builder marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. Listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom. To another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. 
to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another the prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. Listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there, were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs, in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his, his disciples believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Exotic Marigold Hotel and the second best exotic, exotic Marigold Hotel. Films about unexpected possibilities in later life. An unlikely group of aging English people, most stuck with circumstances that limit their choices, take a chance by moving to India and taking up residence in a hotel catering to as its proprietor says, the elderly and the beautiful. These sweet movies tell stories of people experiencing transformation 
resurrection, finding new life and hope where and when they least expect it. The second movie ends with one of the aging characters saying with hope and anticipation, you have no idea now what you will become. Here at Trinity, we have no idea now what we will become. Together, as our community enters this time between rectors, we embark on a new journey, a time of potential, of hope, of anticipation. Of course, there is the sadness that comes with the ending of what has been. Folks who are mourning the end of a chapter in the ongoing story of Trinity Ashland, a story of faithful people worshiping together and serving Christ for over 125 years. When I first came to Trinity, children of original parishioners, who at that time were themselves very elderly, told stories of the formative days of this body of Christ. Stories of belonging to early youth groups, of being nurtured in their faith here at Trinity. Trinity has long been a strong community, and with Christ as our corner, cornerstone, we stand upon a firm foundation through times of change. For those of you who have not been through this process before, let me tell you a little about how it works in the Episcopal Church. We have entered into a time that is a sacred time in the life of our congregation, a time for us to look honestly at ourselves and to discern where God is calling us as a community. Faith that it is God's will we are following into unexpected possibilities that, light, that Christ will light the way is essential. Faith is also essential in today's gospel. According to John, Jesus and his disciples have returned to Galilee where they are the guests at a wedding. In Jesus' days, weddings last days and were lavish gatherings. Having a sufficient supply of wine to suit to supply all the guests throughout all the days was fundamental to the celebration. Wine not only slaked the thirst of the guests and added to the merriment of the festivities, but most importantly, it was a sign of abundant blessings from God. To run out of wine would change the gathering from joyous to tragic, bode poorly for the marriage of him, and would mean utter disaster for the celebrations. Not being able to provide for all those present was a grave faux pas that would bring unimaginable shame and embarrassment to the host and both families. As they enter the wedding, Jesus, his mother, and disciples are just some of the many who have come to the celebration, with little to set them apart from other members of the gathering. Inconspicuous, just weren't people there. As the festival festivities progress, it becomes evident to Mary that the host is running out of wine. And this woman, known throughout the centuries as a person of great faith and great love, turns to her son for help. You can almost see her nudging her son quietly telling him, they have no wine. With faithful confidence in his truly divine nature. And Jesus, who was also truly human, responds as so many of us do, and are apt to do when we, our parents expect us to do what they think we ought to be, we ought to be doing. Jesus sounds a little annoyed with his mother, responding, 
Woman, what concern is that to you and me? My hour has not come. But Mary, as wise mothers are apt to do, ignores the rebuff, and as she has before, Mary responds in faith to God's promises to her. She sets things into motion, saying to the servant, do whatever he tells you. As we live into this time of transition, we are called to step forward in faith that it is the divine, the Holy Trinity, the light of Christ that leads us, guides us, sustains us. It is tempting to transfer our allegiances to people rather than to our Lord and Savior. Without blank, Trinity is not the church I love. In the 40 years I have worshipped here, that blank has been filled in with many names. Bob Ellis, Jerry Lamb, Tom Bridenthal, Cliff Blinman, Ann Bartlett, and now Tony Hutchinson, all rectors that folks loved and were attached to. And how tempting it is on top of that to ascribe fault to personalities among us, to zero in on those on the vestry, the senior or junior warden, the deacon, the sexton, the parish administrator, but Trinity is so much more than any person or group of people. Beloved, we, the people of Trinity Ashland, we are the body of Christ, and it is our faith that unites us, not any particular person or group. For the next couple of months, we will have supply clergy, the Reverend Mary Piper and the Reverend Morgan Silva, who will conduct services and do pastoral care. We are so blessed to have these two willing to step in during this time. In the meantime, the vestry will be working with the diocese to find an interim rector, a priest specifically trained to help parishes during transitions from one rector to another to help us prepare for who we will become and the unexpected possibilities that are before us. A priest who will hopefully be with us until the arrival of our new rector. And talk about finding fault. Interims have personalities, leadership styles, make changes that some of us will like some of us will detest, and most of us will take in stride. The interim is charged with helping us discern where there are green pastures of ministry for us to explore with our new shepherd, the next rector. In its wisdom, the diocese does not permit interims to be candidates for rector, so love them or hate them, that person is only here temporarily. In terms of logistics, the vestry has already started the process of forming a profile committee, which with input from all of us, will complete a parish profile designed to articulate just who we are as a community and where we feel God is calling us. This process of community discernment will help us find candidates who are a good match with us. The vestry will appoint a search committee to accept and review applications, selecting finalists to be interviewed and or visited. The vestry will make the, the vestry will make the final decision. And after being given several names by the search committee, and with God's help, we will call a new rector. The process usually takes at least a year, sometimes more, seldom less. Here at Trinity, I have seen this process played out 
in the calling of four vectors. It is a challenging process. It takes time, patience, and a great deal of faith that it is God who is in charge. And by the way, three former rectors of Trinity have gone on to become bishops, and one became the custodian of the Book of Common Prayer. God has blessed the process in the past, and with our fervent prayers, will bless us once again. As daunting as this all may seem, Paul's epistle to the Corinthian assures us that as we journey together, to each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. Interim periods are times when the gifts of the Spirit that are distributed among us wisdom, understanding, counsel, fortitude, knowledge, faith, healing, will come to the fore. We are each called to our part in the process, from those who will take leadership roles to those who will provide food for meetings of committees, to those who will help in the office, the myriad jobs needed to support our faith community during this time of transition. All of us will be asked to participate by responding to surveys and questionnaires, but the most important way each of us will participate is through prayer. As with Jesus at the wedding of Cana, we may find ourselves called to help even when we don't feel quite ready. God empowers us by our faith in Christ Jesus. Now tomorrow is the national holiday in honor of the prophetic Christian leader, the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. In the spirit of that holiday and as we look to what Trinity will become, I would like to conclude with presiding Bishop Michael's Curry vision of the Episcopal Church. The presiding bishop says, we are becoming a new and reformed church. The Episcopal branch of the Jesus movement, individuals, small gathered communities and congregations whose way of life is the way of Jesus and his way of love no longer centered on empire and establishment, no longer fixated on preserving institutions, no longer shoring up white supremacy or anything else that hurts or harms any child of God. By God's grace, we are becoming a church that looks and acts like Jesus. What does this Reformation look like in practice? Well, we all know we're moving forward when we center on Jesus Christ, when his teaching, his example, his spirit, the way of love and his way of life are the key to having loving, liberating, and life-giving relationships with God, our neighbors, all of creation, and ourselves. When we practice the selfless, uh, the selfless, self-giving way of the cross, when the way of cruciform love, Jesus' act of unselfish, sacrificial, self-offering love, or losing one's life in order to gain it, is our way to authentic life. When we unite around the practice of a rule of life in small gathered communities, when these kinds of groups, small circles of people with, who support each other in following Jesus with intention and accountability are necessary for cultivating Christ-centered life, when we reclaim our Christian identity as a spirit-driven, countercultural underground movement. We must break free of the church's identification with domination systems 
empire, establishment, privilege, and social and cultural traditions that have held us captive, and get back in touch with the risk-taking, liberating ways of Jesus. We must live and bear bold witness to the vision and values of Jesus. We must point to the reality of the kingdom, the peaceable reign of God. And we must seek to embody the beloved community where each person strives for and celebrates the dignity and flourishing of every beloved child of God as much as we do for ourselves. Siblings in Christ, together, let us follow Christ and walk with his light, showing us the unexpected possibilities that are ahead for us. Amen. Amen. Please join me in saying the Nicene Creed. It's not in your bulletin, but it is in the Red Book of Common Prayer on page 353. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of the one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, but was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For us, he was crucified and the conscious life. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He descended into heaven and was seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one who will be Catholic and has a self church. We acknowledge by baptism of your gifts and sins. We look at the first resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world will come. Amen. Prayers of the people. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our Bishop Diana Akiyama, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison especially remembering Catherine, Karen, Chaplain Jerry, Joan, Greg and Trish, Joan, Jackson, Jack, Don and Johnny, Joyce, Kate, Margaret, Kaylin, Karen, Judith, Lynn, Don and Carol, Dick and Judy, Peter, Tiffany, Laura, Elmira, Car Carol, Huberta, Maureen, and the Reverend Dr. Burt. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask
ask your prayers for the departed, especially Margaret Gray. Pray for those who have died. Lord, hear the prayers of your people. And what we have asked faithfully grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. God's peace. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God.
times come of thee, O Lord. And that I have no have to be with thee. The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels, with archangels, and with all the company of heaven, will forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made of flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you have sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error and of truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation, this bread and this wine. We pray, your gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon his gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done.
Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, the sacrifice for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ lived and died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. It is the Lord's table and all are welcome. Thank you. 